Hey folks, it is January 30, Saturday. Welcome to the weekend, and this is the Daily Word. Ah, you know, back in 2018, a year and a half before the COVID crisis hit, my latest book, The Last Out- Great Outpouring, was released. I'm going to hold it up and, uh, whoops, <laughs> had it upside down. There you go. The Last Great Outpouring, most recent book that I've written. And um, in it, I included a section about the coming shift and purification in the prophetic movement. I didn't know that the prophetic shaking that's unfolding now would be happening. So what I'm including today is adapted from that section of that book. In that book, I said that a cleansing of a lot of what has been impure was imminent and was already underway. That's long before COVID hit. It was before the, really before the election, the election campaigns began. I said that it would include a changing of the guard. Well, while faithful patriarchs such as John Paul Jackson, Bishop Bill Hammond, my own father, John Sanford, to name a few, while they paved the way and laid the groundwork for reliable prophetic ministry, I said in the book that a fresh set of voices would carry it forward as an older generation was passing away or simply fading from the spotlight. Well, given the current crisis in the prophetic movement, I think what I wrote in 2018 about a changing of the guard carries a lot more weight now than it did then. I wrote that the emerging generation would carry a fresh heart for a new day. I wrote that they would speak more from humble intimacy with Jesus and from a pastoral spirit than from a concern for gifting. Their words would flow more from the heart of the Father than from any felt need to prophesy or build a great ministry or stand on anybody's stage. I wrote that more than developing their gifts or even delivering prophetic words, they would seek oneness with Jesus and his nature. That they would, they would pursue rest in relationship with him more than being supernatural. Those earlier pioneers pointed the way with an emphasis on character, an emphasis on the cross, an emphasis on biblical grounding. But those foundational core messages were too little heard by too many. And actually, they applied to more than just prophetic people. What we're seeing developing now and what we're about to see is a weeding out and a refining that cuts to the core of our character and takes us back to the cross of Jesus Christ. The need to wow the body of Christ and tickle the ears of men has to give way to a hunger to bow before the King of Kings, broken by his love and faithful to his words, regardless of the fallout. As a result, these emerging prophets will release into the people of God a deeper level of life than we have known, as well as a sense of liberty and holiness that's both life-giving and free of condemnation. Older guys like me, whom God allows to remain, some of us perhaps, maybe like myself, late maturers in matters prophetic, hidden by the hand of God until now, we older ones will inherit a calling to father the coming movement. The heart of a true father wants to see sons and daughters grow into greater things than he could ever attain. Those up-and-coming ones that we sow life and wisdom into may therefore carry greater gifting and walk in a higher level of revelation and accuracy than we who are called to be fathers have known. But so did Elisha exercise a greater level of raw anointing than did his spiritual father Elijah. So what if those in this emerging generation become better known than those of us called to father them? What if their books sell more than ours? You know, what if they stand before thousands as we merely watch and pray? Can we walk in the kind of humility that rejoices to see others gaining notice and recognition for their full-grown wisdom and the revelations for which we sowed the seeds in hidden places? Will our hearts swell with pleasure and pride in their advancement? Or will old wineskins and unredeemed elements of character and ambition and insecurity disqualify us and hinder us from delivering and releasing the fullness of the treasure God has entrusted to us for their sake? When those younger voices confront abuses and imbalances in prophetic ministries, will an older, more established prophetic community receive and judge their words on the basis of the humble spirit in which they're delivered and the soundness of their biblical grounding? 
Or will there be rejection and backlash with cries of, who does that young guy think he is correcting and rebuking major internationally known ministries? Will we, as the, as the body of Christ, be willing to allow for mistakes in the process of growing and maturing? Or will we tear them apart for those mistakes, as we've seen too many doing today? The Apostle Paul told young Timothy not to allow anyone to look down on him for his youth, but rather to exercise the gifting, the anointing, and authority imparted to him through the laying on of Paul's hands. Will an older generation need to be exhorted regarding the flip side of Paul's admonition so that, in fact, the older generation does not despise the younger for being what I might call chronologically handicapped? Paradoxically, the higher calling carries us to lower places. And that is part of the shift. In the economy of God, we rise above by coming under, becoming the first by becoming the last, by humbling ourselves. By serving, we rule and reign while we store up an eternal reward in heaven that never fades or dies away. In light of that, over the years, it's often been said that one cannot be both a pastor and a prophet as if the two were opposed to one another. Well, while, while that might have seemed true in the past, Part of the coming shift involves the emergence of pastor prophets and prophet pastors. The days are ending when prophetic ministries can stand alone outside of the local church that God has designed to be the check and the balance. God calls prophets to be integral parts of the local church, submitted to its disciplines and committed to its people, pregnant with their life as the Apostle Paul was pregnant with the life of the church in Galatia, Galatians 4.19. The prophet pastor and the pastor prophet. They speak from the inside out, not from the outside in. He or she stands in and under, not apart from the local church. The shift underway in the prophetic world, bringing balance now, has only just begun. We're still experiencing the aftershocks of the shaking that's come upon us. The shift itself will unfold in two waves over time. Number one, the passing and or retirement of an older generation and the emergence of a fresh and mostly younger one. And number two, a cleansing of prophetic ministry to discredit and eliminate pollutions and abuses across a broad front. We need and we will have a more accurate flow of prophetic ministry in the body of Christ, faithful to the Father's heart in Jesus because, uh, because of the current shaking we're experiencing. God our Father will see to it for the vindication of his own name. Unfortunately, in my travels for a number of years, for a number of years now and, and, and online, I encounter large numbers of people disillusioned with the prophetic movement. We're grappling now with election prophecies that didn't come to pass. For too many individuals, there have been too many unfulfilled personal prophecies. They tell me about it. There have been too many dates set and missed, catastrophic events that never happened, promises that didn't unfold, moral failings on the part of some prophetic leaders, and a growing number of biblical imbalances and outright heresies. Credibility has eroded. All of this takes an increasing toll on confidence in the prophetic gift, and it's led some to begin to think that the prophetic gift is not for today. Well, that conclusion isn't scriptural. We need a cleansing. That's the answer. So do we simply have a, a, a deep lack of real discernment in the church today? Are we perhaps too ready to hear only what excites us and what we want to hear? Have we relegated true prophetic voices who are always the minority to the sidelines and locked them up because they don't go with the dominant flow? Repeatedly throughout history, there have been occasions and seasons when the truth has rested not with the dominant word spoken by the majority, but with the less popular minority. It happened in 1 Kings 22 when Micaiah stood alone with the, with, with the accurate word from the Lord against 400 other prophets who had different opinions, and they threw him in prison for it. So, this minority, they're seldom, seldom respected or well-known, sometimes until after their deaths. They threw Jeremiah down a well. They disregarded his words. Elijah was called the troubler of Israel, and so it went. Well, maybe we need to stop listening so intently to the popular voices who speak with the mainstream and whose words we love to hear. Could it be that a purified remnant speaks a plumb line word that doesn't win them the platform of widespread popularity? 
Can we discern the word of God in a hidden but emerging generation of prophetic voices who might not speak what we want to hear, but who certainly speak what we need to hear? And in doing that, might we be more edified and more prepared for the glory to come in the midst of a gathering darkness? Well, that's it. I hope to see some of you in church tomorrow if you're in the Denver area. And in any case, have a great weekend.